think there's something deeper here that uh, we haven't uncovered. Uh, it has to do with privacy, and it has to do with the fact that we do not fully internally understand the consequences of our actions in the online cyberspace environment. Uh, a simple example of this is let's suppose that uh, you've gone to Egypt and you're standing in front of the pyramid and you want someone to take a picture of you. Mm -hmm. So uh, somebody takes a picture and it turns Alex just happens to be standing next to you. You don't know who he is and you don't really care. But he gets taken, uh, his image is taken in the picture. And you, know, you upload that to your Facebook site or Flickr or something else. And someone else comes along and looking for pictures of pyramids and you've made this public and he sees you and then he recognizes Alex and so he tags this and now someone else comes along who happens to know him and is looking for other things and discovers him and, and it says, you know, June 23rd, you know, 2012 and he says, but Alex told me he was in London then. <laughs> so suddenly the innocent picture that you put up for your purposes has got Alex in trouble with somebody else. We don't have, a, I don't think, a real uh, visceral understanding of what it is that happens when we do these various things. They look innocent on the surface. There aren't any social norms yet. We have this term called netiquette, which has evolved over the last 30 or 40, oh, literally over 40 years now. Still very, very immature. I don't think we know how we should behave and what, uh, what the social norms should be in this online environment. Alex, what, now that's a, a stated consciousness of not knowing. That's, and I'm interested to know whether historically anybody at some you know, turning point, pivot point of, of technology had this debate along the lines of what are we doing with this stuff? Do we know where we're going? Has it, ha has it happened before that such debates have been fought through? Well, sure. I mean, I think it's... You know, essentially, history doesn't necessarily move in a straight line, right? And I think there's sometimes a tendency to think of like where we are now as the culmination of all world history. And a lot of the sometimes the most interesting clues to where we might be going are you know you can find by looking back a little bit and looking at you know some some of the roads not taken. Um, I think a lot of the stuff we've been talking about today, things like uh, anonymity and privacy and uh, intellectual property controls. You know, I think it's interesting that if you look, for example, at Ted Nelson, he thought really deeply about some of this stuff, and his the, the systems that he proposed really had. Uh, intellectual property and identity management controls baked in from the start at a technological layer and really so solved a lot of these problems. Now, the, the system that we have today is, I think, one of the reasons it's been so wildly successful is because it's so open and, um, and because it does you know, allow you to be anonymous and to replicate things and send them all over the place. But There's the old saying that on the internet, nobody knows you're a dog, right? Right, so. right, exactly. And that's the reason it's been so wildly successful. But um, there are costs to that. And I think certainly it's, it's interesting to look back at some of these antecedents and, and see that you know, there, people were thinking about this stuff. These problems were anticipated. And there are maybe some. But were, um, were, were there concerns at the time the telephone was invented that the telephone was going to prove dangerous to life or dangerous to culture? Well, every time you see, yeah, it's certainly there was a lot of alarmism, you know, with the invention of the telephone and the telegraph, um, you know, the invention of the printing press. Even the, you know, the Plato railed against books as, you know, he thought that people would uh, lose their ability to remember things because uh, because of the they would start writing things down and they lose their ability to, you know, to store stuff in their head. So, you know, this kind of alarmism has come in waves over the years and it's probably not going away. So. And one thing that we're seeing. Oh. And can you imagine a discussion like this when somebody invents writing and somebody else comes along and says, this is a really bad idea because, you know, you could write something down and then it would persist over a long period of time and somebody could find it later on. I mean, this is all, and then nobody will bother remembering anything because you could write stuff down. And, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but, and yet we are having that conversation. Yeah. Uh, with greater automation comes greater potential to track individuals as well. In your example, then you'd mentioned that somebody tagged the photo. Well, we have facial recognition technology now where given a base of photos, say, of 900 million people, well, we already have that, um, you could easily use that technology to automatically identify individuals. So the chances that Alex would actually be tagged in the photo would be significantly higher. So certainly moving forward, um, there can be benefits to those types of technologies, but we also need to be mindful 